There are nearly 1.3 million motorbikes on Britain's roads. When driven dangerously, the results are often devastating. Clear now, traffic. Traffic cop Craig Dawes is in pursuit of an off-road motorbike that's being ridden without a number plate. And it was got a motorbike there to stop, but it bowled over. It got an helmet on, just no number plate, speeds 33 zero. We're just going to follow him for a safe distance at this time. Sometimes when vehicles don't display number plates, it's because they're stolen. It may be an unregistered off-road bike. And three, it may be a road-legal bike, but because of the manner of driving, speeding, they take the plates off. Yeah, intervals on, there's two of us. His idea of what that bike can do, actually, is far more than the bike's capabilities. The DRA is low, there's nobody else around the speed only four zero. Craig moves alongside to try and slow the rider down. I mean, tension, if I can safely, to block it in with a car that is in front of it. Yeah, he's been trying to goad us a little bit. If he sees it inside him, he's going to think, game's up here, I'll pull over. He's just trying to force him into that stop, but doing it safely. The bike does a quick U-turn, leaving Craig scrambling to turn around. It's back towards Balls uh, Marketplace, speed 3-0. But the way it's driving, it doesn't look the most competent, confident rider. He's putting his leg down at every point. There's a lot, a lot of wobbling going off. We've then got to be careful, because if he ditches it, you know, he's going to hurt himself. Stand by, he's just approaching a red traffic light. Yeah, he's slowing. He's gone through a red light, there's no other vehicles around. Oh, yeah, he's got an pass or anything. Uh, speed is 3 0. He's not really taking any risks, so that's why we're continuing. The bike was kind of a dirty, old looking pit bike that sounds awful. Low value, but they'll think they, they can outrun us by going off road. With the biker going across a park, Craig loses sight of him. Yeah, he's done lots of home, he's gone off road. The odds are 100% in his favour now, we're, we're, we're lost. But Craig's not giving up. He begins searching the local area. I'm thinking he'll come out and go right, so if I... park up the road, I can see him. Just see this bike flying past. I'm thinking, no way, you know, I never thought I'd see that again. Yeah, it's a bit like of a carry on film where off we go again. Back towards uh, the uh, Texaco Garage Ned, New Station Road. And bye. He's undertaking, overtaking vehicles, going on the wrong side, failing to comply with traffic lights. Approaching a set of lights, uh, they're going through the sequence, they are red. Gone through on red. It's very uh, low. No vehicles are coming to be clear. 150 yards from the uh, right hand turn towards Upper uh, and it's a right, right, right towards uh, Shirebrook. My thoughts are on it. When he gets in Shirebrook, knows the area, he will go off road. There is uh, two off road tracks coming up, so I'm assuming it's probably going to take one of those. And it's left, left, left towards Langworth. I can't hear the engine on the bike, it's struggling. He was doing a lot of messing around around the engine. Entering at 3 0, speed is 5 0. The RA is low, stand by. Traffic lights are on red. He is slowing. The RA is gone back too high as he's gone through the light. Come on! It's a right, right, right. It looks like he's just gone off-road a little bit, but it looks like he's struggling with fuel. He's messing around with the uh, fuel tank. Towards 
And it's a decamp. The rider goes on the run into a local estate. Daddy's coming out towards you. Yeah, I'm just trying to find out where. After a thorough search of the area, the riders manage to get away. Right, right, it looks like they're having fuel issues and he's just jumped off. And then like this. And the on foot. Yes, yes, on foot. And he's just being bowed. There's no damage, there's no contracts or anything. He's uh, fell off. Oh, no, he's jumped off, I'm thinking we've got his bike, which is a bonus. I'm quite happy that at least it's going to uh, stop him doing the similar thing again. So we not, might not get him at the time, but hopefully he'll come come later on. Coming up, a careless biker treating the roads like a racetrack. If it comes off that, not good. The ride is in cardiac arrest. And a tragic accident come this way, he's lost it here and basically I mean, took the bus stop. But could it be a case of hit and run? Race. Kind of hits the back of the yeah. car, doesn't it? And now it's going to take Around 18,000 motorbike riders are injured on Britain's roads every year and more than 300 are killed. Let's get a vehicle check, uh, M1 North. Near Mansfield, traffic cop Carl Jackson is on patrol in an unmarked car. He's worth a follow, isn't he? Number plate's unreadable. The problem I have straight away with this particular bike is the rider is wearing shorts and a t-shirt, a pair of trainers, so he's not exactly got a lot of protection. If he comes off that, not good. Going to struggle to keep with him. Where's he going? In the UK, bikers are only required to wear a helmet. Many don't wear other which could save their life. And I can have a vehicle check. He's 38 towards Mansfield. At this point, I'm thinking, well, he's going to be worth a follow. We'll see what he does, see how he behaves. He's not obviously picked up who I am because I'm in an unmarked car. It's almost like if you're riding a sports bike, you have to ride it like you're racing it, riding it like they're on a racetrack when they're not. Yeah, stand by, it's hard to read, it's a motorcycle. Long time to recover that. The speed that he's riding at is three-figure speeds. The way he rides is quite an aggressive style of riding. So that in itself is a bit of a, a warning flag to who you're dealing with, essentially, and the risks they're kind of willing to take. I thought them cars were going to go a bit quicker than they did, so I've lost my cover a bit here. It might be these lights, unless he's managed to get through. Flipping gone, hasn't it? He's there. Damn! He's gone. <laughs> oh, where are we now? We'll do well to find him there. He's there, look. That's worth doing. I know that motorcyclist I tried to give the plate of is failing to stop. And I have uh, lost sight of him at the minute. But he's got a helmet on. I need a helicopter. On all the way. It's a total loss at the minute. I'll try and get the reg for it. It was on a very small number plate, but essentially. It drew my attention because he was doing over 100 mile an hour on the A38 and it's disappeared now.
Well, I'm never going to keep up with that. It'll do like 0 to 60 in about three seconds on that thing. Essentially, he had a small number plate and was driving a bit fast. So I don't know what else he's done, but he didn't want to stop, did he? But he's currently 1 0 to him because he's uh, evaded capture. Essentially, the owner of that bike we will try and speak to or give a notice of intended prosecution. And as the owner, he needs to tell us who was riding it. Ideally, we'll find the bike and then just seize it because it gets that bike off the road and it prevents it from failing to stop in the future. The risk with that is I pursue that and it's, he starts taking more risks. He's going to end up coming off that motorcycle at high speed in shorts and a T-shirt. It's frustrating that we haven't caught up with the chat at the time, but I can't dwell on it. It's on to the next job. You can only be lucky for so long. One day your luck runs out, doesn't it? And that's the day either we catch him or the day he kills himself. Tango Sierra 2, 29. Ned, do you want me to continue to this other job or do you want me to divert to this uh, collision? It's early evening and traffic cop Matt Cooling receives a report about a serious incident. And hey, you monitor last, I'm going to divert. Yeah, 10 24 would it? So there's, there's a collision that's uh, just been reported to us um, that involves a motorcyclist um, and it's possibly going to be a, a fatality. Some suggestion that both legs have been amputated and um, the rider's in cardiac arrest and they're performing CPR on him at the moment so it's not it's not sounding good at all. Carl Jackson is one of the first to respond. When I arrive there is fire service there and Helimed doctors are on scene. The paramedics are doing CPR on the motorcycle rider and so as I arrive they are still trying to save his life. He is having CPR to try and get a pulse back in him, bring him back to life, uh, give him some sort of chance. Okay. But unfortunately, um, that doesn't happen. His injuries are too severe and um, he's pronounced dead at the scene. N.A. Hemmer's doctor pronounced deceased at uh, 2039. Sadly, we do have multiple fatal collisions each year that involve motorcyclists. You know, each one is traumatic for that family and the emergency services that go and the witnesses that see it. You know, they're not nice things to deal with. Other traffic officers and the collision investigation team are also at the site of the accident. Sorry, Sorry, just Matt. all right. Matt, cool. Is, are you happy to take up a scene long? Yeah, I've got to go with Jacko just to go and see. Are you doing the next family? Kid? Yeah, she only knows, but she's gone a bit. Uh... I've spoken to her already. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got to do some family liaison stuff. Really. Yeah, yeah. Fire, it's just single vehicle then. Yeah, he's come this way. He's lost it here, and basically he's come off the bike and he's gone into a bus stop, and that's what took his legs. And then he's landed there. All right, crikey, man. Riding it in a pair of shorts. Yeah, shorts and, and t-shirts and trainers and trainers. PC Chris Wells Jackson is one of the first officers to arrive. The closest witness has seen him hit something over here, and the only thing that makes it obvious that he's collided with is the bus stop because there's a smash pane, um, and the marks that the collision investigation team have, have marked out on the road all sort of lead to that curbside, the bus stop, and then where the deceased laid with his vehicle. So. It just appears at the moment that he's took this little bend too fast and he's not been able to make make the bike go straight as he's come out of it and he's gone straight into there. So PC Younger Jackson are gonna to go to the family now. It's their job now to go and sadly update the next of kin now, um, formally, and then obviously answer any sort of queries and questions that they'll have now. It's part of the job we do as police officers and as traffic police we attend serious and um, unfortunately fatal road traffic collisions and there's always family and friends that obviously want to know what's happened. They're aware they came, they live up the road so they've, come, they've been here already. 
uh, a young lady. So uh, I shall go and uh, see her at home. I told her to go back to her home address and I'll go and chat to her there, do some family liaison stuff. It's quite a long process that we have to do, but um, initially I'll just go and speak to her and answer any questions I can that she might have and uh, reassure her that we'll find out what's happened as best we can. It's quite a sad part. She's obviously very upset. Um, she won't have taken it all in yet. Uh, so she's gone home and she'll sit with, she's with a friend at home, so she's going to sit with a friend and I'll go and uh, speak to them a bit further about what's happened. With families, immediately after someone's died, we kind of, our involvement with the family initially is quite intense. It's very upsetting for them. That emotion you try to not let affect you too much if you can, but we're, we're all human. Whilst Carl goes to see the family, Matt and the team collect evidence from the accident. So I think at the minute there's some possible CCTV that's been identified um, that may show some of the build-up to the collision. Every house on here seems to only have doorbell cameras or ring cameras which all pick up motion. So I've texted the guy who's in the first house after the call and he's got a ring doorbell. He's going to check remotely for me now because he's not in. Um, and he's going to text me if he's got anything on his footage between those times. It absolutely helps build, uh, build the story as to what's happened because you could go half a mile back um, and you might get evidence of that motorbike doing something that would corroborate why this has happened here. Uh, and that's why we're, we're trawling for CCTV that far out of the, uh, the cord in itself because it, it all builds up a nice big picture. Crash Detective Sergeant Darren Muggleton is the officer in charge of the investigation. We have got some conflicting information in that uh, we have got some witnesses that are saying that um, they, were, they didn't believe anything else was involved in this crash. Um, however, we've got um, two ladies that were in a vehicle who, they're not 100% sure, but they thought it might have clipped another vehicle um, that was travelling in the opposite direction to the motorcycle. So those two ladies have got, supposedly got some dash camera footage. Forensic collision investigator Matt Lacey is part of Darren's team. I'd like to know before we wrap up mm. what the dash cam shows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because if he has clipped on the We're waiting to look at some of the dash cam footage uh, that, from a camera fitted to the, the SEAT that was following directly behind the, the motorbike because at this stage there's some suggestion that the bike may have clipped a vehicle coming the opposite way as it was performing an overtake. Now, that may just be a witness making a mistake or it, or it could have actually happened, but either way we don't have a vehicle that has said it's clipped the bike as it's performing an overtake. So it's important that we find out before we leave the scene to make sure we don't miss anything. And if there is a vehicle, such a vehicle, obviously that changes the investigation slightly at this early stage. Back at the station, the team is watching the dash cam footage. He's going yeah. pretty quick there. He must be doing what, 60, 70 at least? Yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Look, brake lights on that yeah. car. Yeah, it's clipped on it. Yes, you do see. Has he brake, and he knows he has, he because he's great. Like you look at his reaction, yeah. he's coming around that bend there. He must know. Because he changes it. Course, yeah, there. Yeah, he's braced. Kind of hits the back of the he's car, doesn't it? The, the car's almost twitched, doesn't it? The officers now need to on the driver. Coming up. There's some suggestion it might be a hit and run as well now. Matt may have found the mystery vehicle. Oh, hey, hey, what's this here? That definitely looks fresh, doesn't it? And a biker lashes out when a drunk driver takes him out. Yeah, yeah. How much have you had to drink today? Come this way, he's lost it here and basically he's come off the bike and he's gone into the bus stop. Ten miles east of Derby, the traffic cops are investigating a fatal collision involving a motor. Because he changes his course, doesn't he? Yeah. There. Yeah, he's braced. Kind of hits the back of the he's car, doesn't he? The car's end end almost twitch, doesn't it? Dashcam footage shows that a second vehicle may have been involved. 
Forensic collision investigator Matt Lacey is part of the team and wants to track down the car which failed to stop at the scene. The officer has taken the He's had a look at it and he wants to make contact with a vehicle that he can see on the dash cam to kind of rule out whether there was any contact between the bike and that vehicle. It's not conclusive, I don't think, but it's enough for us to want to go and look at this vehicle, which we have identified. Are they aware? W were they not aware? And if they were aware, and, it, and indeed there was contact, are, you know, are they trying to hide something? Is there something that we need to know about? So it is important we make contact with them as soon as possible. So we're making his way now to the uh, registered keeper's address of that particular vehicle to establish, if we can, if it's involved in the collision itself. There could have been a coming together. That could have also then played a part in why the motorcyclist has then lost control. So we'll, we'll get there and we'll, we'll see if we can establish what, what part it's played. You have reached your destination. Right, so I'm going down, mate. What you got? Your sign. Oh, that's it. That, that does look quite fresh, that thing. That, there's a, something there, look. We'll have a chat with him. Look at that, there. What's that there? Oh, what, there, there you go, what's this here? Yeah, look at this here. I'm just thinking, is it worth me taking some pictures quickly and sending them to Muggo via Teams? Yeah, do that. Yeah. Now? Yeah. Cool. Camera. Just bring torch this side, then, if you can. I mean, that, that definitely looks fresh, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's the way it'd go, wouldn't it, with a, you know, passing collision. Hello. Oh yeah. Thanks. Cheers. We've come because of a collision um, involving a motorcycle. What? Obviously, you know about it, mate. The first words out of your mouth. So, what? What is it you know about it then? Initial impressions of the driver was it almost anticipated us coming, uh, which I thought was odd because he wasn't sat there denying he'd been involved in a collision or that he weren't aware of it. He obviously was. The man claims he didn't realise that the bike had made contact with his car until he stopped later and saw the damage. I find it odd that he'd not made any effort to contact the police, but in the same token, he may not have realised what's happened behind him and how serious it was. So, you know, that, you just have to bear that in mind, that he may not be fully aware of what's actually happened. What's happened has resulted in a fatality, OK? Obviously, we've had a quick look at your car. And obviously it looks like, yes, there's fresh damage to your car. OK, so in our mind, obviously we think that obviously it's because of the coming together, OK, with the bike and your car. As I say, uh, we're quite happy at the moment to say that you're a witness, you know, and that you've been caught up in it. If we weren't, we would be, you know, unfortunately we would end up arresting yeah. you at this stage, well, so... OK, thank you, Doc. Thank you. Cheers. Crash Detective Sergeant Darren Muggleton is still at the site of the accident. The, the damage is fresh, mate. It has been caused by the motorcycle, although he didn't realise that until later. He has also got dash cam, which is burnt or is put onto a memory stick. Yeah. We're going to seize the car. We now know it's been involved in a collision because the register keeper's admitted to that fact now. Uh, so our thoughts of all oh, that looks fresh damage has now been confirmed. We've breath tested him, the driver, that, and he's, he's blown zero, so we know we went drink driving or anything, that's not played a factor on. And all his driving documents are in order, so yeah, at the moment he'll be treated as a witness until, you know, unless something else contradicts that. If, if he'd done something wrong or he thought he'd done something wrong, 
you know, uh, would, there, would there have been a dash cam there? You know, would it have disappeared? Obviously, it's very serious if people do start tampering with evidence. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think, you know, he'd be answering the door saying, yeah, here you go, here's, here's the footage I've done for you. So he's obviously you know, trying to be as helpful as he can. Back at the station, Matt and the team are keen to look at this new dash cam footage. Um, so that is the original dash cam with the cards in there. Let's have a look. I'm desperate to see what, what it was like on the other angle. What you see is him trundle up to that road from another road, turn right, go along the road, past the bus stop, go a bit further, maybe another I don't know, 50 yards, maybe 200 yards. And there's a car coming towards him, and then suddenly the motorbike appears, from overtaking that car towards him, comes towards him on the wrong side of the road, and obviously then he comes out of view at this point here, which is the bit where obviously to presume the, the collision, the glancing blows took place. Ah, so that, that turn that you see on the other footage is him trying to avoid it. If that's his view, he sees that really, really late. Yeah, yeah which is probably explaining how much pointing to the left, but that is, yeah, Jesus. He claims not to have realised an impact took place there until later, but it doesn't sound like he's obviously seen what's happened afterwards. If he got anything to hide, mate, why would he leave his car in his drive? Why would he start getting the footage ready? And ultimately, watching his footage, he's not doing anything wrong. He's on his side of the road, suddenly he's met with this motorbike that just appears on the wrong side. I don't think that's probably back to black okay, by the dash cam from the yeah. vehicle in the opposite direction. It's yeah. really important that we establish exactly what's happened and why. Um, you know, sadly, we're dealing with an incident where someone's lost a life and, you know, we owe it to that person um, to provide answers to the family that they've left behind because they'll want to know exactly what's happened to the loved one. Four. Motorcyclists are 25 times more likely to have an accident than car drivers. The yeah, see them just round the court, I think. Traffic cop Dan Mitchell is responding to another collision involving a car and a motorbike. Oh. There's been some sort of altercation with the uh, the rider and the driver. So we'll just see what uh, what's occurring. Air four one stage six. Are you the guy that's been knocked off? Can you just wait there? You're right. That's fine. We'll just, we'll sort that out afterwards. What's occurred? Yeah. Knocked the man off the bike. Okay. The man on the bike has assaulted him. Yeah. But this man can't even walk straight. Okay. He's totally off his trolley. Okay. His car yeah. is two streets down. He's got no front end on his car. Uh, did you follow? Did you follow him down? There's another man that's just that's followed me down as well. Is he with and the other gone, car? Yeah, and he's gone to get the registration of that car. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He did Do you want to have a seat? And I ask Tango four one. The uh, I think the crux of this is that the the driver of the car that's now parked a couple of streets down. Uh, it's not this motorcyclist off. The motorcyclist got up and then assaulted the driver, and the driver uh, appears to be uh, a bit drunk. So we've got a couple of offences here. Mate, do you want to follow me? Have you got any identification on you? OK. Um, he's a guy that's been knocked off the bike. But he, yeah, but he's then clocked him. So... He's met. Yeah. Come here. He's mad me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you got your identification? I'll say name and address, everything. Yeah, yeah. When he smacked me, straight yeah. away. He fell over. Yeah. He smacked me on the face. Yeah. I didn't say anything wrong. Okay. He damaged me. Yeah, yeah. have a seat. Okay. Yeah. Always diabetic. Whilst Dan deals with the driver, a colleague talks to the motorbike rider. Right, well, could have been involved in a road accident. Yeah. Accidents, 
stop the breath, all right? Okay. Just keep blowing the tube till it did stop. The rider says that the car pulled out of a side road in front of him. He was then forced to brake and collided with the side of the car. Yep, zero. Right, regards to the RTC, because she was halted him, we'll deal with that slow time. Off to we'll deal with him in a minute. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to speak to you about that late stage. All right. I wouldn't say that motorbikes are at higher risk of being involved in a crash. Um, I, what I would say is that if they are involved in a crash, there is um, a higher chance that they're going to come away with, with an injury. How much have you had to drink today? I just left my niece's house. Yeah, how much have you had to drink then? I don't have a lot. A lot? No, no. You've not had a lot? But I had a drink. You have had a drink? Yes. It looks like you've had a lot to me. You drive a car and you are in a big steel box. So you need to be more observant for cyclists, pedestrians, motorcyclists, things like that. Unfortunately, some people aren't very observant. That motorcyclist, it could have been dead. So nice deep breath and blow into the machine. Blow, blow, don't suck, blow. If you don't do it properly, I'll just arrest you for being unfit. Right, so blow. Do you understand that? Right, blow. Blow, 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 blow. Thank you. Massively. 109. Right, pal, I've got to tell you at this moment in time, you're under arrest for driving whilst over prescribed limit. The reason for your arrest is that you've given me a roadside breath reading of 109. The limit is 35. So now we're going to go to Derby Police Station where you can do two more evidential tests, OK? All right? Do you understand yeah. that? What he did. 109. Why he smacked me? Probably because you've knocked him off his bike. So swing your legs in and put your seatbelt on. <coughs> OK, I need to go to the police station now, mate. Yeah, that's fine. The driver is more than three times over the limit. My feelings about drink drivers, selfish, in the main, arrogant. There's not a lot of nice words that I could use to describe my thoughts about what I think about drink drivers. Um, potential killers. So I, I'll ask one question here. Yeah? yeah. Why did you smack me? You've crashed into him. Understand, right? Mm -hmm. You have been drink driving, mm -hmm. and you have you you could have potentially killed someone. Mm -hmm. no, no. But let's be thankful that no one's dead. That's it. Yes. yes. No one's died. That's it. Which is a blessing. Thank God. Yes. That way. Come on, then, mate. Oh, mind your face. At the police station, the man's required to take two more breath tests. Off we go. He's blown 109, but then also given another reading of 111, which suggests that he's still going up, uh, so the alcohol's still being absorbed. Um, I, but he, as you can see, he was just so drunk, to the point where he couldn't even work the seatbelt in the back of the car. Um, he couldn't stand up straight. He was talking over people. That just tells you how inebriated he actually was. And for the fact that someone thinks it's appropriate to be able to get behind the wheel of a car in that state is, is quite frankly disgusting. Um, he has knocked the motorcyclist off. Thankfully, there's no injuries um, and thankfully, there's no other, other collisions. That was someone's life waiting to be taken, I think. If he'd have gone any further, from what people have been saying, he's only just come out of that road, so he's not even made the first junction without colliding with someone, um, which is it's just unbelievable, really. All right, see you in a bit. Get your head down. Coming up... That's a uh, motorbike. Another biker in serious trouble. Stand by, I'll just get injured. As he ends up through the rear window of a Mercedes at 60 miles an hour. I've seen him in the back of my car, just arms and a head. Two zero from two three. 
Mate, it is uh, on the entry slip to the 38. Derbyshire traffic cop Craig Dawes is on his way to a collision involving a motorbike. But details are quite scarce, really. Um, all we've got is three vehicles and a motorbike. In Britain, bikers account for just 1% of road traffic, but 20% of all fatalities. And A23, can we get highways as well, please? Gonna need recovery, uh, full recovery for, that's a uh, motorbike. The motorbike rider is being treated in the ambulance. Stand by, I'll just uh, get to injuries if there's any. We've got any injuries, serious injuries or anything? Hey, it's running to back at court, it's not even touched the floor. Just a quick update, it's uh, a motorbike has gone actually uh, in the back of a, uh, a vehicle. The motorbike riders become wedged in the actual rear windscreen of the vehicle. Who's is this one? Have you got any damage or anything? No, no, we're just, just going to be a witness. You've witnessed it? OK, yeah. what's happened? Basically, there were uh, a lorry, and I think he stopped, and then there were a car behind him. The car behind him basically tried swerving into the lane where this motorbike and the Mercedes was. The Mercedes broke, and then the motorbikes crashed into it. Yeah, received. Speak to an independent witness. Uh, a vehicle's pulled out from lane one into lane two, which has caused the Mercedes to brake heavily. Um, unfortunately, the motorcycle's not been able to uh, slow down in time, and he's collided with the rear. The Mercedes driver works for the police and was on his way home. When I seen him in the back of my car, just arms and a head. As I, as I, as it, as it, it was crazy. I didn't know what to think. I instantly stopped, just so he stays there. Because obviously it could have caused more damage to him, mate. Right? If, if he'd come off the car and I carried on, maybe car from behind would hit him. After he's gone into the back of my car, he's actually stayed there. It's only until I've stopped the car, he's come out of it. The thing is, I, I do this for a living. Police investigation. So, witness something like that, it's not nice. Not nice at all. I'll just check on his injuries. I think I've just got maybe a fractured wrist. So, uh, luckily, I had all my protective gear on uh, and my MT carbon helmet. And uh, yeah, been very lucky. <laughs> With most people going over handlebars like that, it's going over handlebars. We usually see broken legs here or here. And it's got, it's absolutely got nothing because it's got obviously this protective padding in his trousers. So, it's, it's been very lucky. Absolutely, very lucky. So you've actually come to rest through the back windscreen? Yeah. yeah. At first I thought he didn't notice. <laughs> he didn't carry on. And he carried on down the, down the 38. I'm like, I'm banging on roof just in case. You're joking? It, it, not far. I think he would just move out of the way of traffic, but I panicked in case he was... So he, ac was so he actually travelled some distance in his... Yeah, ..stuck yeah. in his windscreen? Well, his back windscreen, yeah. <clears throat> not a scratch on you. Not a scratch on your helmet. That's been through the back of a w car windscreen and uh, not a scratch on it. It just shows the importance of, of buying decent kit. This has clearly saved his life. You know, he's gone through the windscreen head first, not a mark on it. So, very, very lucky boy. Mate, I would definitely, definitely get some lottery numbers on tonight. He valued his life. Um, he took safety very, very seriously. And this is a great advert for the, you know, the safety on bikes. You buy the correct gear and you might walk away. You can see from the state of that, it's got massive heavy front damage. I mean, he's probably been going 60, 70 mile an hour at least, so, yes. Every year, more than 300 riders die on Britain's roads. One thing when you're on a bike is you're very, very vulnerable. You know, if you come off even at 15, 20 mile an hour, the chances are you're gonna either injure or break something. If you run into something in a car, yeah, you'll bend the wing, you'll bend the bonnet. You running something on a bike, it's, it's going to be your legs, bones. If you come off, you are going to be, uh, be hurt, unfortunately. We've all seen the guys that ride around with no gloves, T-shirt, shorts, flip-flops, and at 70 miles an hour, you come off a motorbike, you're going to be in a world of pain for a long time. can't say it's always the motorcyclist's fault, but a lot of the time, 
the reason they come off is because of, of how they are riding on that day, riding it like they're on a racetrack when they're not. And they may well ride on a racetrack and have track days and fly around flat out at nearly 200 miles an hour, but the roads of Derbyshire are not designed for that. And that's where people get it wrong. In this episode... Hey, we've got a motorbike failing to stop. The off-road biker who failed to stop for Craig Dawes could not be identified. Right to right, top, it looks like they're having fuel issues and he's just jumped off. But after the bike was recovered, it was confirmed to be stolen. He's worth a follow, isn't he? Who mm. tell? The sports bike rider who raced away from Carl Jackson at over 100 miles an hour... He's there. Damn! <laughs> has not yet come forward, despite a notice of intended prosecution being sent to the owner's address. The bike owner could now also be facing charges of failing to provide details of the rider and fines and points on his licence. This me on the pit here. Yeah. I didn't say anything wrong. OK. The drunk driver, who was punched by a motorcyclist in Derby, was convicted of driving over three times the limit Massively. 109. And was sentenced to a community order, fined £100, and has been disqualified from driving for two years. With regards to the RTC, because you assaulted him, we'll deal with that slow time. The rider received a caution in relation to the assault. How lucky are you? It's very lucky to you. So you've actually come to rest through the back windscreen? Yeah. No action was taken against any of those involved in the accident on the A38, which resulted in the biker smashing through the rear windscreen of an off-duty crash investigator. When I seen him in the back of my car, just arms and a head, it was crazy. I didn't know what to think. The rider made a full recovery. It's just a single vehicle, then? Yeah, he's come this way, he's lost it here, and basically he's come off the bike and he's gone into a bus stop. And the investigation into the death of the rider caught on dash cam moments before his fatal collision is still ongoing. The only reason it's actually activated, he's not through motion, it's through the how high that sound is as it's gone through. his exhaust. Yeah. his exhaust, because otherwise it wouldn't pick anything up. Police believe the rider may have been under the influence of alcohol at the time of the crash, and his speed may have also been a major contributory factor to the man losing control and colliding with the bus stop. We are lucky that he didn't come into contact with anyone else. Let's just say, for argument's sake, people have been waiting at the bus stop. They wouldn't have been able to get out of the way of a bike weighing you know, close to 200 kilos uh, hurtling at them at 80 miles an hour. Um, so I think... Well, it doesn't bear thinking about. I think um, we can all imagine what the consequences would have been. And the... Heard the call, coming about this vehicle, all over the road. Over 9,500 drivers are found guilty of drug driving offences every year across England and Wales. It's not what we're looking for. And Derbyshire traffic cops like Adam Shipley are always on the lookout for drivers who are under the influence. Has he got past Ripley yet, Nick? That vehicle has hit a um, two minutes ago. OK, we just had uh, reports via uh, another force. Cars just coming on to got Three calls about it already. Really erratic driving all over the road, swerving between lanes and nearly hitting the centre barrier. We're in the area, so I'm going to see if I can spot the vehicle. Yeah, I've got it. I'm just going to test but if you southbound. And it's travelling southbound, so you know, it might come off before, before I see it, or it might be carrying all the way down the motorway. There'll be old plates on. You can't drive on the motorway as a, a learner driver. Behind it now, sir, 50 miles an hour, weaving between lanes one and two. Got blue lights, sirens illuminated and uh, sirens activated. There's just no response. Uh, maintains lane three at six zero miles an hour. It's just nearly hit the barrier, wobbled the wheel a bit. Not the action to somebody that's driving normally. 
it was obvious that something was seriously wrong with the driver, the way it was driving. This is a risk stopping somebody in a live lane. My plan is to follow it until I get some other cars with me. Let's move back out to Strad Lane 1 and 2 now. And it's committed, committed. And I've got a rolling lock on behind me. And uh, still not stopping. Just waiting for some more marked cars. I'm waiting to get some further units in front. Um, I think we'll could do a preemptive and forget enough. Tony, CLC, can we just confirm? Have we only got one male occupant in the vehicle or do we have any others? Looks to be one male occupant. Proceed. It's uh, speed probably 7 0. It's uh, struggling late, it's 1 and 2. Proceed, do you have any units injured at the moment or are you uh, by yourself? No, myself at the moment. And a Tango 38, I'm going to drop down to help ship us out. 13 miles away, Adam's colleague Nick Rice is on his way to help. Shippers is behind the vehicle, I believe drunk driver, so we're going to try and make our way to Tango 38, high performance, unmarked vehicle, pursuit management team back. Just gone, or almost gone into the central race again. I don't think he's aware of anything. I think he's just not aware at all. Almost like somebody's like drifted off to sleep and then they've woken up again with a sudden start and like, well, I don't think he's trying to get away. He's basically probably fallen asleep in a one and a bit ton weapon that's going at 70 miles an hour on a motorway. I'm just waiting for it to crash uh, into the barrier or into a, into a lorry. He's just nearly hit the barrier, both offside wheels across the offside line, um, he swerved back into lane four, but uh, very, very close to that one, nearly hit the barrier that time. Okay, now he's driving, I think we'll get preemptive uh, or a T-pack tactic on him. He's lanes three and four, uh, he's nearly lost control of the wheel there, but he's regained it. Yes, yes, I can go with tactic. As Adam tails the driver, four more units join the pursuit. Tango 38, I'll be in a minute. Third of a mile now, the traffic's uh, building up a bit. The speed's reduced to 6 0. Yeah, no, it's uh, nearly the centre barrier again. Well, I think we'll wait until we've got two other team pack resources there. We've got road closure further down, so we want to get him stopped. Shippers, I'm just joining behind you, mate. Box drop 5 1. You'll be able to take safety, potentially. We get to a lot of the units with us. Yeah, can do. Put safety on now, we're Foxtrot 5 1. One unit to near side, one unit to offside, and one to front. Our volunteers. 3 8, I'll take front. Okay, I'll take rear. One to offside and near side then. Do you want me to do a drive by, Nick? Yeah, let's get him stopped. Yeah. Put box on, box off. Box, box, box. Vehicle stop, 10 8. Jump stop, what's happening? What? No, I don't know something now. Not sure who knows what day it is, to be honest. Well, there's a hard shoulder a bit further down. Go past this junction, hard shoulder. With the man detained, he's given a breath test. What's the scores on the doors? Zero on the breath test. Let's get a drug swipe out there. Drug swipe out, yeah. Yeah, zero on that. Whilst they wait for the results, the driver's details are checked. It's got an expired driving licence, which he's aware of. Um, so, it's under rest away and failed to stop dangerous driving. Several people caught in his driving. It's quite unusual. You might get one call, but to get, you know, four or five calls, um, does suggest his driving's really bad. He's basically said he didn't stop because there's an unmarked car behind him and uh, didn't, didn't see it. Anything yet? Yeah, it's good. It's negative on the line. Uh, so I'm going to lock you on section four. Yeah. The fit for the he said he's taken some method out. So I think go to Bristol and do a fit test. Yeah. 
Right. It's obviously not right. I suggest he's impaired by some sort of drug. So he's been arrested, uh, suspicion of drive whilst unfit through drugs. Methadone is often used to detox from heroin addiction, but it can make users sleepy. All of a sudden, be surrounded by four or five police cars and being dragged out and being handcuffed. I think it came as a bit of a surprise. It probably sort of woke him up a bit. Get off the door, Randall. Don't, don't start messing bit. about. The child Do not on your start, don't, don't even try it. Get this wrong arm right, off well, me. It's staying there, now, mate. Is it? Is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Is it, is it Do not there. start. Come on. Do not Come start. On. Listen. Carry on, and I'll spray you with this. What, because you've got my arm and because I've tried to get it? Look, you start kicking off, I'll have no other option to spray you with this. It's not very pleasant. Well, that's up there, because it's great. Are you going to calm yourself down? Tell strong. Are you going to calm yourself down, pal? Well, let's break that. Why don't you snap it on a bit more? No, I don't need to. I'm brave, mate. I'm not right brave. Do not need to. I'm not brave, mate. There's no need to do that. Is it the heart pumping, like very strong and all that? Eh? I will let go. Let go then. But do not try that door handle again. What's he going to like it? It's not a good place to be if you're trying to restrain someone in the back of the police car. It is difficult dealing with people that are under the influence because you never know quite how they're going to react. You know, one minute they can be your best mate and then the next minute they can be wanting to punch you in the face. We're not too far from custody, so we'll just make our way there just to give them a, a chuck when we get there. Coming up. If more, All right. A custody kickoff. Me. As Adam runs a drug test. This is the finger and nose test. Ready? And... Yeah, you're making me a, a criminal. I'm not a criminal. Lives at risk for one more drink. If she hits a cyclist, they are gone. If she hits a small car, that driver will be killed. just nearly hit the barrier, wobbled the wheel a bit. In Derbyshire, after a suspected drug driver fails to stop on the motorway, oh, no, know something now. he's arrested by traffic cop Adam Shipley and taken to police custody. OK, so we'll find your detention. Is that, is that normal? In Keep you on still. Yeah, yeah. That's Jump. normal. Yeah. If oh, we... If... Oh, all right. I was about to take them off then, but I don't think I will now. Did you take them off? I was about to, but you did that. Well, it's so. fine, mate, because you so just want to strangle me anyway. Is that boy here? Think yes. this is a bio? Yeah. No, that's the other two, three, two, one. I'm always your driver. Oh, I don't give a... Oh, he's gone now. Is he running off out of the mix now? Yeah, he's got better things to do. Better things to do, yeah. yeah. Mate, we're not, we're not going to mess it's you about, that, mate. Right. I don't know where I am and I've got him... Mate, you could... Mate, mate, listen, I've been all right with you. Yeah, been quite calm. Um, if we take these off, are Get you going to stay... Mate, the, no, no, the, the bleeding, just, just, just listen, if we take these off, mate, you're going to stay nice and calm with us, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, no just, they're just bleeding and bruised. OK, I'll take these off with them, buddy, yeah? Don't mess about, mate, otherwise we'll go back on, pal, yeah? Understand that? No. Some people, when they're under influence, so quiet and they just want to go to sleep, you know, wouldn't hurt, hurt a fly. Other people, it turns them into, you know, animals. You've just got to watch what they're doing and just be aware that they can be unpredictable. Your driving wasn't normal. We need to make sure you haven't, cause you haven't got anything in your system that you shouldn't have, buddy. Right. Yeah. It might, it might just be tired, mate. It might just be tired. But we'll, 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 we'll do. No, we'll do this, pal. Can you just stand up straight for me? You place your left foot on that line. So it's basically like that. Uh, do you understand? Right, it's next bit. So this is the finger and nose test. Ready? Right. Okay, cool. Right, come take a seat out here, mate, and we'll uh, that's all the, the test done. You didn't do horrendously, mate, but it wasn't, wasn't great, I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of the things were a bit, a bit not as they should be. Come on, back up to the desk. Okay, mate, are you currently taking or using any drugs or medication prescribed or supplied to you for medicinal or dental purposes? Prescribed that methadone. Methadone. Do you consent to us taking a sample of blood from you to have it analysed? Not today? Yeah, now. No, we don't, no, she's just don't need it. Huh? You've just said I don't need a sample of blood, now you want to suck No, we don't, we've, right? we've not said you didn't need a sample of blood. You did. No, I didn't. It's a yes or no answer, really. 
either yes, I'll provide a sample of blood and the nurse will do it, or it's a no and you'll get charged with failing to provide. Due to the state of the man's veins, it's difficult to do a blood test, so a urine sample is needed. Toilet. Mate, wait, wait for a minute, mate. We'll do this procedure. That's part of the procedure going to the toilet. What? Toilet's not part of the procedure. Could be. Could be. Well, we need to get a sample of, basically, a sample of weed, don't we? Oh. So, uh, if, you, if you are needing the loo, mate, that's even better. Yes. Can you hold the door for two seconds, mate? Yes. Yes. Like those people. I can have a toilet and still fish in a cup. I know, but you'll need to provide two samples. I don't lose the opportunity. South two. That way. If the driver fails this test, he faces charges of driving while unfit through drugs and driving without a licence or insurance. If it helps, mate, I'll step outside. By the sound of it, you've gone out to work trying to earn some money. But you can't be selfish, you've got to put the people's safety as well. If you're not in a bit state to drive, you don't. You could have quite easily killed somebody. For information, the driver in this vehicle is suspected to be over the limit drink driving. Derbyshire's traffic cops, like Matt Cooling, police some of the country's most scenic but dangerous roads. And when there's drink or drugs in the mix, the results can be deadly. 15 miles west of Chesterfield, Matt's responding to a report of an accident on a country road. It's a crash, but possible drink driver. I really despise drink drivers. It's just selfish. Everyone knows when they've had enough to drink, you know, before they get into a car. And it's you know dead simple to nowadays to get a taxi or an Uber. That way you're not putting your own life or anyone else's at risk. Right, okay. You know, this man that was here. Have you, have you any I don't know why he did it. Why would you smash the window screen? Do you want a statement from this chap here? I don't know, I'm not supposed to uh, just get here. You were first, were you? Matt speaks to the witnesses while Chris deals with the driver. No! Oh, don't, don't, don't you dare. You keep moving round and you keep moving your arms around. Oh, oh that's It makes not... it more difficult for me to deal with you, okay? Yeah. And then they uh, smashed my window, window screen, no. and I, 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 I did have ask not. You to a local free, and they said, and, and, that's and why we've just come. done this oh, to me. And it's like, it's making me, you, you, you're making me a, a criminal, and I'm not a criminal. But you've been drink driving, haven't you? And you smashed into this wall, which belongs to a farmer, so you have committed an offence. No, I'm not drink driving. I don't know. Right, okay. I I I'll get recovery. No, that hurts. That hurts. Okay. I take obviously you're driving this, I presume. Yes, mate. I've yeah. just literally been through an RTC myself, like. Have you? Yeah. Right, okie dokie. Um, yeah, mate, fill me in what the crack is then. So there was a guy walking up the road who just said, I can't believe it, she's just flown past me at like 80 miles an hour. Okay. Hour. She's clearly had something to drink. Was she still in the driver's seat? And she was pending, so I pushed the, you know, the kickboard down. Yeah. Got out of the car, she, she cut out, all the nose was bleeding and everything. That. Yeah. Tissue in the door pocket. Yeah. She got out, she calmed down a bit, and then after five, ten minutes, she's tried driving off. There's only three wheels on the vehicle. It's just beyond belief that she's involved in this crash and then her thought process is that she's still going to drive off in a car that isn't going to get off the wall for starters and it probably isn't going to move because of the damage that's been caused but that just shows the level of intoxication that she was under. 84, you blue. That was really high, that. It's about three times to bring drive limit, nearly. And a half times. Yeah, yeah. Again, if somebody yeah, well, I went to a fence and I've had a couple of glasses wide, I should be over the limit, but you're saying I'm over the limit, so I'm over the limit. Well, it's way past lunchtime, you know, it's half past nine at night. I don't know what time it is, but I've been, with, I've been with them and I've had water and I've had a little thing since, yeah. but yeah. I did have a couple of glasses of wine. With a large glass as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's two large glasses of wine is nearly a bottle. What? In one bottle of wine, there are three large glasses. So if you've had it, if you've had at least two large glasses, you've had you've had two thirds of a bottle of wine. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Drink driving doesn't just involve the driver. You know, the ripple effect is massive. You know, damage to farmers' wall. I understand that some livestock got free. Luckily, I'm a gamekeeper from down the road, so we rang the farmers. They told us where the um, 
local farmer was. We went off and got him, and he called the cows, and they've gone running off of the fields. So they're not on the road either. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, it was a nice evening yeah, until then. Are you right? You won't let me have a cigarette. Oh no, you can't have a cigarette. Oh right. God! Why, why are you taking a seat? Why can't I have a cigarette? I think if you're a nicotine addict, you're a nicotine addict. I need a wee. I need everything. Just put yourself in there. No. What grates on me is you've got somebody who's drink driving, who's unable to walk on their own in a straight line. They're unable to retain information. He's then traveling in a two-ton vehicle, traveling above the speed limit. If she hits a cyclist, they are gone. If she hits a small car, that driver will be killed. Because the lady's been involved in quite a serious collision, she'll be taken to the hospital by Chris and John, uh, where she'll be examined by a doctor for injuries. I'm arrested. What you going, Bell, Tom? I and he, he wasn't nasty. He wasn't a nasty He didn't listen to me, but he's not a nasty All sorted? Yeah. I think she's not wore a seatbelt and got a bloody nose from the accident and due to a demeanour, which could be as a result of the alcohol or a potential head injury, uh, she's gone to hospital now to be checked over. We've obviously got the vehicle recovered now. Um, and then we'll get the road open shortly. This road opened, Ollie. Coming up. Potentially second person in here. The consequences of bad driving hit hard. The fire service are trying to cut the way into the vehicle, and we just don't know if they're going to find anything else in there. Even if the driver. Stay there, pal. Stay there. Gets to walk away from the wreckage. It's probably Crawford Fells. I'll give up. Yeah, yeah. Traffic cops like Adam Shipley face the consequences of drunk or drug driving every day. Near Chesterfield, there's a report of a crashed car with someone trapped inside the wreckage. The gentleman's just driven down, um, seen a car buried in some trees that he saw earlier, uh, so he decided to phone it in. Uh, Nigel's just arrived, so the car's really, really badly uh, damaged into the trees and he can't get anywhere near it, but it's got some quite considerable damage. So he's asking for more units just to come and make the scene safe. We've got a fire service on route as well. We'll get down to the car and see if anybody's there. Potentially coming somebody lying in there all afternoon. Yeah, They say it's a fatal. Potentially second person in it. Passengers d deceased. Um, possibly going to be a driver deceased as well. Tango 3130. Nice. No, Do you want me to close the drive pass instead? Yeah. We've got to investigate everything, we just need a sterilised area. But we can't do that on a dual carriageway with cars potentially coming at 70, 80 mile an hour towards the scene. So we're just going to close it at the best possible locations. Nigel's saying that it's in a really bad location. He's almost got hit a couple of times on the bend as he's trying to check everything's okay, check the scene out. So first priority is going to be to close the road. With the road closed, the fire service begins searching for any survivors amongst the wreckage. It's looking like a vehicle's gone that way through the grass, so we'll try and avoid that area. That's going to be used for the uh, forensic closing investigation. NA uh, Tango 30. Got the reg number of this vehicle, I think 31's passed it. Can you run it through BOF, please? See if it's uh, when it's last with a red camera. While Adam sees if any other car was involved, the fire service is trying to clear a way to the wreckage for paramedics. Uh, I've not been that close myself because fire service is still there. You're just amazed that it's probably about 10 foot from the side of a busy dual carriageway and it's just pretty much invisible. Hundreds of people have gone past it and not, not even blinked at it. So, you know, it's uh, quite a harrowing scene to be fair. Um, it's dark, it's middle of nowhere. 
the fire service are trying to cut the way into the vehicle um, where we know there's at least one body and we just don't know if they're going to find anything else in there. I'm just going to speak to ambulance now, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, You're right. We're we'll getting a few details or whatever in a bit. And so yeah. The bar, but... yeah. Yeah, it's 2321, is it? Some of ours down, so we don't need. Yeah. Oh, is, okay. is it just one in the car? Yeah, there's just one. So, right. if Franklin's legs are still trapped. 2446. It is confirmed fatality. Just one in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah, uh, it looks like uh, the yeah, driver is the deceased and he's yeah. been thrown yeah, into the passenger exactly. seat. But 1026, uh, life pronounced. Can I just have a quick look? Sorry, mate. Sorry. Adam checks to see if there's anyone else who may have been travelling in the car. There's nobody else got out of here, has there? And a uh, Tango 30. He's had a massive Im impact. Um, you can see where the driver's side of the car was. Uh, that's gone completely into where the driver would have been sitting. It was the tree I mean, the flaps down of the car, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. There wasn't anybody else in the car. There's no way that anybody could have got out because the car was completely covered in branches. All the doors were shut. We've confirmed nobody else is in the car. Um, DFS have looked around. There's nobody else in the surrounding area. Did you get any joy on the um, results for this car? 2351. Yeah, t 10 to midnight last night. And no one's reported him missing. Well, no. Quite sad, really, isn't it? He's been lying there nearly, nearly 24 hours. Uh, nobody's reported him missing. No one's put a mark on the car to say he's, he's missing. Adam wants to find out if any other cars were involved in the collision. And a uh, Tango 30. Just another thought. Um, obviously, now we've got the read of this car at 2350. Can you just uh, do some further checks on this vehicle to see if it's followed or following any other vehicles, you know, like within a, a second or so to suggest he's in convoy with anybody else? Yeah, I think it's just to negate um, if there's anybody else involved in the collision that might not have stopped, if that makes sense. Right, well, we've just done a few checks on the car. Um, obviously, it's a quite a lonely stretch of road at night. Nothing, you know, for, for you know minutes and minutes at a time, which looks like last night is the same case. That car's hit about 23.51. Nothing about three or four minutes either side of him to suggest somebody's hit him off the road. It just all goes to suggest that it's single vehicle involved and we're not looking for anybody else at this time. And then we're going to try and find out who he is um, and if he's been reported missing. So at the moment, it's yeah, just a lot, a lot of forensic work to do. Traffic cop Dave McAllister is looking for information on the driver. Uh, just having a search of the vehicle, it's, uh, it's not a pleasant task, but uh, unfortunately we have to, to try and find out if there's anything very obvious. Any ID issues, there's bottles of very, very strong wine in the Cannabis in the car. Oh, drugs. Uh, uh, MCAT, that's cocaine. Either, that's either Amphet or Coke. Yeah. And quite a decent bag of it. Yeah. yeah. Burner phone. Yeah. You could smell the cannabis as soon as you went into the vehicle. There's also some prescription medication. It sort of gives a little bit of a background into what might have caused that incident, that car to leave the road. And also, because of the nature of the road and the distance the vehicle has travelled off the road, the severity of the impact, speed is likely to be a factor as well. We've done some checks on him and we've got his photograph from the driving licence. So we're just going to now compare his image to see if he looks like he is. This sort of thing is thankfully very, very rare. This is the second time that I've been involved in a circumstance like this. You know, I've been to dozens and dozens of fatalities, but usually you have witnesses. Is that how we think it is then? Yes. I've seen the picture uh, and I've seen his face, same hairstyle and the age fit. It would appear that's the case. We've got a job to do, we've got to do it professionally as we possibly can. And then we just accept it as part of the tasks. You know, some, of the, some parts of our job are brilliant, this part, you know, is the worst thing you can do. Oscar Tango 2-2, we've got a report with RTC, and if you can start travelling, uh, immediate response. You know. Yeah, can do. 25 miles away, traffic cop Matt Cooling is on his way to another accident. Uh, so just been dispatched to a... Um, sounds like a, a crash. Uh, where the driver's run off. 
I'll go that route. Is that the only description that we've got? That it's just in socks? Yeah, we'll chase it up for you, over. Yeah, that's lovely, thank you. Right, so there's some suggestion that the driver seen running away is just in his socks, so I presume he's clothes, but missing his shoes. It's not every crash you go to where someone makes off without shoes, so it was a bit of a bizarre um, description that was given. But the same token, they're going to stand out and probably not get very far as well. End of the day, leaving the scene of a crash, you know, get you into a lot of trouble. They've probably left, haven't they, because they're doing something wrong, so possibly drink driving, I would suggest. Potentially, we may come across the driver en route to it. There's the shoe there. Stay there, pal. Stay there. Stay there. I've got this mail. Come off your phone. Please. Come off your phone. It's told me to come off my phone, so I'll give up. Right, I've got some information that there's been yeah. a car crash nearby. Yeah. And the driver's been seen to run off just in socks and you match that description. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, is it have you been involved in a collision? I haven't, no, I haven't, no. You haven't? No. Alright, well I suspect that you have based yeah, on the information yeah, that yeah. I've had. And I get the impression you've had a drink. Yeah, I've had a drink, yeah. Okay, so because I suspect that you're the driver, I'm gonna request a specimen of breath from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I must explain to you, if you fail or refuse to do that, you'll be arrested. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, are you willing to provide one? Yeah, yeah. When was your last drink? Um, about probably an hour ago. About an hour ago. Right, okay, just come and grab a seat in here. Right, just grab a seat. Watch your head. As Matt detains the driver for a breath test, traffic cop Ollie Priddle arrives to deal with the crashed car. Are you all right with him? Yeah. I'll go and have a look what's going on down there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if you come this way. Yeah, just to let you know, I know full lift, please, for the Audi. Reasons RTC. It's about six foot in a ditch. Airbags haven't gone off. There's no intrusion into the vehicle whatsoever. It looks like it's just completely misjudged the exit and ended up in this position. There's no speed involved at all. Can I ask a question? What, what's happened to my car? I've told you, I suspect you've been in a collision. Until it's crashed. Well, that's the information I've got at the moment. I need you to seal your lips around that end of the tube yeah. and it's one continuous breath until I tell you to stop or it clicks. Do you understand? Okay, seal your lips around there. Blow. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. That's it, thank you. Okay, that's going to check now to see how much alcohol is in your system. While Matt waits for the results, Ollie's gathering more evidence. Who saw the guy in the socks? He was running down here, he was just in all white. Yeah. Ran past me. I was out on my way up here. Right, okay. Um, we did have a 4 by 4 turn up, though. Right, okay. He said his friend had rang him and asked him to throw the car out. I went, well, nobody's taking the car until the police have come. He went, right. what, you've rang the police? I went, of course I have. He went, oh, shit. And right. drove off. Okay. Yeah, I've got his registration. If Go you ahead. need it, for Yeah, me. yeah, might need that, yeah. Okay, you've blown 53. Yeah. Okay, which is over the uh, prescribed limit. Okay, the limit is 35. Okay, so at this moment in time, I'm going to arrest you at 23.12 on suspicion of driving a motor vehicle on a road whilst over the prescribed limit. Uh, but I need to come put some handcuffs on you because we're going to custody, do you understand? Yeah, what would you know where my car is? Y your car's been involved in a collision, which I think you're responsible for. It's in house. That, that's why you're under arrest, yes. When do I get to see my defence? Well, you'll be interviewed about it later. Did you do a person DL check on the details that I gave you of the lad that I've got stopped? You might want to check the insurance uh, because I'm not sure if the car's under mine or my girlfriend's name or my ex ex girlfriend's. All right. Can I just ask you how, how is this fair that if somebody's taken my car, I'm getting arrested for it? Will this go down on my record? Well, I've told you at the minute, mate. I've arrested you because I suspect that you're the driver. Okay, you'll be interviewed about it. Later. Yeah, okay. If I'm not the driver, what happens? Well, we'll make inquiries into who the driver is. Yeah. And see what evidence we can obtain, okay? Yeah. But at the moment, I suspect you are. You're on the insurance and you're drunk, so you're under arrest. Yeah. 
this driver could make things a little bit more simpler than what he was trying to do. If he just admitted that he'd crashed his car, drunk, you know, if convicted, he could lose his driving licence and he could face a ban. But when you start spinning a yarn of that your car's been stolen and you start trying to pervert the course of justice, which is exactly what he's trying to do, to distance himself from the reality of what's happened, you're then talking, you know, territory of, you know, appearing at Crown Court, basically, um, where then you could face a term of imprisonment. I've got some questions I need to go through with you. Um, I'll do them in a Take a deep breath, and then a nice steady breath. Keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. OK, you belong 51 and 51. That is a fail, unfortunately. You on here, Ollie? Yeah. Right, he has just blown 51. Nice one. What's he actually saying, mate? Is he denying it or what? So, he's made some reference, mate, that um, his car's been stolen. Um, and obviously he's rung the police, I understand, um, before we arrive, and he's said the same thing. But I've said to him, just before we booked in, that, you know, if you're lying, mate, you're going to get yourself in a lot more trouble. Um, so just think about what you're saying. And that, he's not said anything any different, mate. So, um, in essence, mate, yes, that's what he's saying. Um that it's been nicked, but as I say, it was found what? what? What were we, 300 yard away? And it matches the description that was also given, and he's on the insurance. Yeah, so there's a bunker, mate. I've got a statement, one of the security guards sees the lad that you've got run off. Okay, yeah. If he is the driver and he continues along the vein that, you know, his car's been stolen and he's now rung the police to report he's stolen, then potentially he's looking at perverting the course of justice. That is a lot more significant of an offence than the drink driving. So hopefully it'll sober up and it might start to sink in the seriousness of the incident. Coming up, a driver with something to hide. Found multiple bags of white powder. Lands himself in serious trouble. You commit a crime by using fraudulent registration plates. It's not a traffic matter, it's a crime. Promenade to all uh, Oscar Tango mobile units, can I be making your way please towards this vehicle? It's a clone plate job. Uh, it's gone past him and triggered his AMPR camera. Drunk and drug drivers are often linked with other forms of criminality. Traffic cop Chris Ryan is heading to help Matt Cooling, who spotted a wanted vehicle. So we'll um, stop and have a chat with them from the description of the car. I know straight away that I'm dealing with a cloned vehicle. What you find is that they'll use these cloned vehicles to go and commit other forms of criminality. All right, what's your name, bud? Put your handbrake on. Yeah. Mate, have you had a drink or something tonight? No, yeah. He's given me a different name to the keeper. And now he's trying to blag who he is. Wait. Something not right, this lad I've got stopped. Here the drugs, drink. Oh, no, no. So what, what's going off, mate? You're not seeing the blue lights, you're not putting the handbrake on. I don't see it. What, what's the issue? I don't see it. Well, I don't understand how. Is this your car? Yeah. You got your driving licence with you? No. Hey? No. Mate, I'm getting really nervous because you're making me really nervous. Right, sorry, what? Because you're fidgeting about. Mate, I'm all right, I'm good. Right, come and join me in the car. Oh. Right, let's get this straight. Yeah. Don't lie to me right. as to who you are. That's not your car no. then? Right, is it on false plates? No. Is it insured? Yeah. Well, it's not insured to you, because that car doesn't belong to you. I don't believe you who you are, mate. Do you want to just check the VIN, Ollie? Yeah. Make sure it's not stolen. Right, let's stop mucking about. Yeah. Give me your phone and stop messing about right. with your phone. Because I've told you, mate, you're making me nervous. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm nervous, I'm going to pull that plate. Are you insured to drive that car? No. Right, have you got a driving licence? No. No. Have you not got one at all? No. Right, thank you. Let's start being honest, mate. Right. We'll get somewhere, won't we? Yeah. It is frustrating when people will just, you know, bare-faced lie to you. It's my job at the end of the day to prove that they're lying and it's just delaying the inevitable. The VIN number that I've given you, what does that come back to and what is it? Is it stolen or, or what? I haven't found it yet, but it definitely isn't a genuine. Uh, just give me a minute and I'll have another look. Uh, the car comes back, um, or the VIN number comes back to a different 
car. It's either a stolen car or he's cloned it because he's got no insurance and stuff. So uh, we're just getting to the bottom of that as well. A car of that description is on clone plates. We need to be straight with that. Oh, it is, yeah. It's on false plates. Yeah. Is that because it's a Nick car? No. I bought it. Right. I can prove that. I'll let's slip it over. He's got a provisional licence, no insurance, and that vehicle's notified off-road. That's why he's driving around on a set of uh, false or clone plates. Uh, he's trying to cover up all of those things. We spoke to Mum about it, and all she told me not to do it. Very, very silly. Very silly. How long did you get banned for? Potentially you're looking at nine points, yeah. and then you commit a crime by using fraudulent registration plates. That's a criminal offence to do. Yeah. It's not a traffic matter, it's a crime. And this is the first time you've had any dealings, then, you say, with the police? Yeah. Check that out. Not a good start, then, mate, is it? No. Oscar Tango 20 is doing, He's uh, notified off road, no reports on it. Yeah, no, that's who I've got, is the driver. Right. The good news is the car isn't stolen. Yeah. Obviously, it is, like you said, all registered to you and stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm going to require a specimen of saliva from you. Yeah, do that. OK. Uh, this checks for two things. Checks for cannabis, cocaine. Yeah, I've not had none of that. Just you can check. Oh, do you ever, have you ever had any? No. Again, tell me the truth, because this doesn't like, check like yesterday's. This is what's in your system. That's how long? It could be weeks. Um, I've done it before, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I've done it before, so it could be in my system. I've not done it today, though. Right, start rubbing your tongue around your mouth. And then blob your tongue out when yeah. I say. Lean forward, please. <laughs> Because Matt suspects the driver of drug offences, traffic cop Ollie Priddle searches his car. Found multiple bags of white powder, because yeah. he says he's very fidgety. So it might well be under the influence of drugs as well at the minute, so I'm just going to do a test for that, and I'm pending results of that then. So we've got five bags of uh, white powder yeah. here. Personal use, Ollie. Right, some bad news for you. You've tested positive for cocaine. What? Right. Have you got anything else on you you shouldn't have? No. As the car is recovered, Matt searches the driver. Is there any other drugs on you? Yeah, look that. Oh, it's another back there, look. I knew you were hiding something. <laughs> I told you, mate. I could see you fidgeting. Did you say you've not got any more on you? Right. Grab a seat in there and I'll just put the seat forward. Um, obviously, I've already arrested you for drugs. Again, you're further under arrest for possession of Class A, and I'm going to further arrest you for driving otherwise in accordance with a licence and no insurance, OK? I don't understand why people do it. Julio's quite clearly had the conversation with about what he's got on him and the fact that he's going to get searched, and yet he stands out of the car and we find more drugs on him, even though he's adamant he's not got them. Um, they're just idiots, aren't they? They don't understand that we're still going to search them no matter what comes out of the mouth. Yeah, it's five individual bags inside that bag. Oh, right. Right then, because of the amount of, that you've got on you, then again, I'm going to further arrest you. So rather than just possession of controlled drugs, it's possession with intent to supply. Intent to supply? Yeah, because of the amount. I've just got no time for drug drivers. The reactions could be a lot slower. It's just a time bomb that something's going to happen, and it's only sheer luck that it doesn't. They put other innocent members of the public at risk, you know, through their selfishness, and I'll do my best to go out every day and catch as many as I can. It's getting more and more common, drink and drug driving. They've been to the pub, they've had loads to drink, they've had a line of coke. I don't think they see the correlation between what they use for recreational purposes to then getting into a car and the dangers that then come with that. They veer over the road and crash into your mum, your dad, your cousin, your brother. Nine times out of ten, they make it, but it's that one time out of ten that they don't. They run out of luck and that's, trust me, all they're running on. In this episode... He's just nearly hit the barrier, wobbled the wheel. ..the driver who was weaving all over the motorway and failed to stop for Adam Shipley... Is it? Is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. Is it, is it, is it, is it Do not it. stop. ..has been released under investigation while the police await the results of his drug test. Get him off the mate, mate, the, the bleeding man. Oh, don't, don't, don't you dare. You, you're making me a, a criminal and I'm not a criminal. The woman who crashed into a farmer's wall, who was almost three times the limit at the roadside. 
she's tried driving off. There's only three wheels on the vehicle. Gave a blood sample at hospital and after analysis has been summoned to court on suspicion of drink driving. All right, just just get off, please. I'm not going to run off. The fatal and it's completely buried and it's a horrendous damage. After a lengthy investigation into the death of the driver whose car veered off the road and was found nearly 24 hours later covered in trees. The fire service are trying to cut the way into the vehicle. A verdict of death by road traffic collision was passed. Very strong wine in here. Quite a decent bag of it. Yeah. Isn't it? Stay there, pal. Stay there. The young man whose car was found abandoned while he was walking nearby without shoes. A police. It's probably squad if I was on. I'll give up. Was charged with drink driving. He's due to appear at court. No action was taken against him for perverting the course of justice. What, what you've rang the police? I went, of course I have. He went, oh shit. Something not right, this lad, I've got stopped. And the driver with cloned plates on his car, who tested positive for cocaine at the roadside. Found multiple bags of white powder. Oh, I was in the back there, look. I knew you were hiding something. <laughs> was charged with driving on fraudulent plates, driving otherwise in accordance with a licence and insurance, and has been summoned to court. It's not a traffic pass, it's a crime. He has been released under investigation for the drug offences, pending analysis.